Let's get some custom loot going with global loot modifiers. Let's see how to use those. Alright, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at a global loot modifiers. Well, what are those? Global loot modifiers basically can modify loot tables of, well, anything that's in the game. Chests, you can modify loot tables of mobs and also, for example, blocks. I'm going to show two examples, one of the block ones and one of the ones in structures because that was one of the things that a lot of people said, hey, how can I add custom loot to already existing vanilla structures and we're going to go through all of this. I definitely recommend you go through the entire video first and not just jump ahead to the structures because there are a few key things that you will need to do in order for everything to work. So let's just get started. Right, the first thing that we want is inside of our events a package we're going to right click new package and this is going to be the loot package and in there we're going to have two new classes. One of them is going to be the firestone edition modifier. Now the naming here is of course once again something that you can change as you would like. Uh, in this case I've called it the firestone edition modifier because this is going to be a modifier which adds a firestone to a particular loot basically. And this will extend the loot modifier class right here. And now if I hover over this then you can see that you should implemented the do apply method here. We're not actually going to do that. I'm just going to copy over the class. Of course, everything available for you in the description, either in individual gists or in the GitHub repository. And I'll quickly explain what is going on. So this, of course, is just a normal constructor here, which is going to call the super. Now, very interesting here is we have this private final item edition. And this is also being passed in via the constructor. So in theory, we could add all sorts of things here. We could add multiple items. We could add lists of items. We could add, I mean, I mean, basically anything that we really want to. In this case, this is sort of an example of how to add something to a loot table. So this is how you would just add it. And same with this one, right? So the do apply method basically gets called sort of, you can think about it as just before the item drops, right? So there's going to be a list of items that might drop. Those are this, this is the list of item stack uh, that's being returned. And before we have this generated loot parameter here. And this is a list where all of the items that are just about to drop are basically, yeah, so you can see the comment here generated loot is the loot that would be dropped if we wouldn't add or replace anything. So the idea is that this is the loot that is just about to drop. And then we have the addition, of course, saved in this class. And we're just going to add that as an item stack here. And then we're going to return the generate a loot, including the new addition. That's sort of the idea here. That is what the do apply method does. So yes, in theory, you could also just say something like generate a loot clear, and then it would only drop and then it would drop nothing. And then you could add your item. And this way you could, of course, also replace something. I definitely advise against something like that or doing it with extreme caution because changing a lot of vanilla stuff can lead to some incompatibility between your mod and other mods. Just be aware of that. Then we have a static class in here, which is the serializer. We simply need this to read the JSON file. So this is very similar once again to the reading of the JSON files for the custom recipes. And this basically reads the addition member from the JSON file, which we're going to see in just a moment. And then here we have a write one where it also writes that in there. And it just writes in the uh, item that we have in here to the addition. So that's sort of the idea here. And here the new Firestone modifier is basically created. So this is where the instance is created. And there we give the, the addition to the constructor. Right, but that's not all we want. We also want the other one, which is going to be the Firestone Structure Addition Modifier. This will also extend the Loot Modifier. And once again, I will copy this over. And once again, everything available, of course, in the description below for you to copy over as well. This is, as you can clearly see, very, very similar to what we've seen before. Only real difference here is that we have this context get random next float variable in here. And this simply makes sure that, hey, this is only about a 15% chance of spawning this loot inside of that loot, well, chest in this case, because this is being done in the structure. Uh, you could, of course, also take the same loot modifier and put it onto uh, different things, basically. However, for our purposes, what we're going to do is we're going to put this to 0.15 
just so that we are going to have a little bit of an easier time actually finding this loot in a chest. Uh, in our case, I wanted to add this to the igloo just for fun, basically. So let's just see. As you can see, the rest really is the same. So this is sort of a template for if you just have one addition that you want to make for one particular loot table. So this is sort of the addition one. There's also replacement one. And you can, you know, think of anything else, of course. Once again here, Java knowledge is insanely valuable because most of this is very straightforward Java, to be honest. And now we need some JSON files before we will proceed. And the first JSON file is in the data and then the forge folder. So we're going to right click on that new directory called loot underscore modifiers. Once again, making sure that this is written correctly. And then we're going to have a new file. So right click new file. And this is the global underscore loot underscore modifiers that JSON. Once again, making sure that this is written correctly. Very important. And I will copy over the contents of this and I will explain what this means. So as you can see, this seems very similar to a tag. I mean, yeah, pretty much. And this points to two different JSON files. One of them is the Firestone from Magma or Firestone underscore from underscore Magma. And then the other one is the Nether Fortress. Well, this is of course not right. This is going to be the igloo here. There you go. And what we're going to do is those are going to be put into the tutorial mod. So data, tutorial mod or your mod ID. Right click new directory called once again loot underscore modifiers. I'm going to copy over both of those. So we're going to copy those over. Once again, they are of course available. And the way they look, they look a little bit different. Now, if I open both of them, so we can look at this one as well. So this one here has a has particular conditions. So those conditions have to be met. This basically specifies from which loot table it basically adds this, right? So the condition is, hey, this has to be a particular state property, block state property, and the block has to be the magma block. And if we now break the magma block, then the this Firestone addition modifier is being fired, and it will then read out, hey, the addition, we have a Firestone, and then it's gonna do the do apply method, the addition is being added to the generated loot, and then the Firestone will drop as well. In the Firestone in Igloo one here, as you can see, we actually have to have a forge loot table ID as a condition. And then loot table ID is going to be Minecraft chests, Igloo chests. So if I go down to external libraries, and then we're going to go to uh, not here, actually, but here net Minecraft client extra 165. And then to the assets actually to data Minecraft loot tables. Uh, this is basically what you will need. So if you wanted to add it to an entity, you would have to have the another condition here. And then you would need to change this to the entity. And then if you wanted to take another chest, for example, you could simply take in, for example, the nether bridge or entity treasure. You could basically add your drops or your loot tables to almost any chest in there as well. Right, and then one last thing that we need to do in our mod event bus events. So this is very important that this is in the one where you have the bus basically being the mod bus. We actually need to add, well, basically the registration here. I'm going to copy over the uh, method here and I'm going to explain, of course. Once again, so this is the register modifier serializers. This is in this case a registry event where the global loot modifier serializers are being registered. And there we simply get the registry and then we're going to say register all. We can basically put in as many here as we would like. And we're always creating a new serializer here. And then we're setting the registry name to the new resource location of the actual JSON file. So this is the name of the JSON file. This has to match basically with exactly what we have put in here, as well as what we've put into the global loop modifiers JSON. And if all of that matches and everything looks fine, let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves back in Minecraft. So let's see if I set down some magma and I mine it, then you can see the Firestone drops when I mine it. So this is pretty much exactly what I was thinking about. So that's pretty good. Now, in this case, of course, you would have sort of a dupe where you can just do this as often as you would want. This is, of course, just an example here. And now let's see if we can find an igloo with a Firestone. All right, we find ourselves here in the igloo and let's see. So first of all, we have a downstairs. So let's go down and let's see if we can find the Firestone in the chest. And there it is, the Firestone in the chest. And that is actually how easy it can be to add loot to vanilla structures and vanilla blocks. 
Once again, if you do go the route of replacing something, be aware that this can break mod intercompatibility with other mods that maybe rely on stuff. I will also link the Global Loot Modifiers documentation from Forge itself. This is where they basically show you how you can sort of replace something when you have a particular tool, basically. Then instead of dropping weed, you drop additional weed seeds in this case. So this is also something to be looked at. Definitely not a bad idea. Right, but that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would, of course, appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah.